former Deputy Chief Justice, that uh, Justice the Hang Museniki to come and address us. This is not Google, this is the real thing. Google knows nothing. Yes. The battery protocol. The Deputy President is going to be speaking. In 2017, I brought here by respect Comrade Fisher, OP, Parama Pakboy. I grew up under these revolutionaries. Here's one of them. And there was no room to say, Comrade, Comrade, because I no good Steve Trader. city, one But But I am, I'm, I'm really, I'm not going to make a speech at all. I. As I say, the Deputy President will be here in a moment. And thank you for being here, sir. I've got my own connection with this institution. When the young lady next to you, the Chancellor of this university, was inducted, I was right here, sir. I came on another occasion to come and talk to the <coughs> law faculty. I came to come and talk to students. <coughs> I came here to deliver the Griffiths Mkanga Memorial Lecture right right here. So I've been here a good few times. And Udada George Bezos and, and myself have come here really as executors in the state Nagata to Um much as there are many stakeholders, if he was alive, he would have been asked, should the university be named after you? And that had implications for us, and we were very privileged. I really come in that capacity, and I am here to congratulate you, Vice Chancellor, Chairperson of Council, indeed the Mayor of, of your Metropolitan, the student and student leaders, here we meet again. The last time we met, we were talking about fees that must fall. <laughs> and you had the promise was OP, did it? <laughs> and we were talking about all, and it was a privilege to listen to the militancy of all of you. Young people, Jim Kalatada, the fees must fall. And you guys have become so soft. And you were urging me that we should stay revolutionary and remember where we come from and why we are here. So they are boy have been born and to come back and to see you all full of spirit and provide that leadership all the time. Before I left, I phoned Umama Nomzamo, Winifred Matigizela, Mandela, who we had to consult and did consult. And she sends her greetings. And she wants you to know that she supports wholeheartedly. And I, I repeat that in her stead. This morning, again, I talked to Mama Gracia Michelle. She's sorry she couldn't be here, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor. But she again sends her greetings and support. And that's about Unkosi. It's really Valley Le Mandela is here or not. I haven't seen him. I've looked and looked, I haven't seen him. And we've had an extended long chat about this process and this journey. And his position was rather simple. Deputy President, he says Nelson Mandela is a global figure. He's a repos repository of 
amazing values and it can't be restricted to one metropole. He's comfortable to be part of your metropole mayor, but he's larger than just this particular metropole. And it was a telling point. I thought it was a valid point that he made. I talked to Dr. Makazuwe Mandela about three days ago, and she is just as enthusiastic, and she has sent an apology in support. So is Zenani, so is Zinzi. So in short, we have touched all bases to make sure. And Dr. Bezos is here for the, exactly the same, same reason. And thank you for being here, Baba. And we'd like to wish you well. I've listened the whole morning. When we interacted, you know what I said, what my views are, I support without reservation. And I made three qualifications. I'm going to make them and sit down. In support of this whole process, I said, one, you assume the duty to be like him. And everybody has said this in a variety of ways. But I'll put it in very simple terms. You assume the duty to be like Olifasha Mandela. It's a near impossible duty. Leaders come and go, they come with various ideologies and shapes. And he's one of those truly who is who stands out as an incredible leader. Let me give you an example. I go to him and say, in the course of writing of the interim constitution, which the deputy president was negotiating with a variety of people, and I was the technical committee that wrote it down, that uh, why do we have to have a reconciliation clause in our constitution? Now, all of you know, I, I, I spend a lot of time with Dr. Mandela. But that George could tell you. I was one of the favorite people he liked talking to and debating with and spending time with. So, Mr. Tata, why, why are we doing this? Why are we writing in a, a clause in the interim constitution, a post emblem that the deputy president knows a lot about? He looks up and he looks down and he takes out that thick finger of his. He had a very thick finger. And he liked doing this. And says the Khan, Ganam, Mamed, we are buying peace so that we may reconstruct our country, so that we may be truly free. Now that answer has stayed with me ever since. And that is why, President of the SRC, you're right, it is not only about reconciliation, it's not only about forgiving, it is also about transformation, equalizing, repairing, in other words, the devastation of colonialism and apartheid. And he understood that. He understood that there's the one side where you give when you say, I forgive you. I embrace you for the horrible things you did. But the other side, that never escaped him, and this answer he gave me, the Hang Dalam, we are buying space in order to free our people and reconstruct our country. And that is the part you're raising, and that's the part that is correct. And the one that I would therefore like the university to keep in mind, you must continue, and I've heard all of you saying, that deep agent for change. The second thing which I, and I, I said this to you, Vice Chancellor and Vice Chancellor, inclusivity, Mandela represented inclusivity. The opposite of apartheid. Apartheid was divisive. It saw us different. It puzzled out public goods unequally. It was unjust, it was unfair. 
He singled out people because they were gay. He singled out people because they were not Christian. He singled out people for, because they were women. Apartheid was horrible. It was divisive. Your university must be the opposite of that. So inclusivity is a fundamental thing that Nelson Mandela would turn in his grave if we don't do. Education, skills, all of those things put together were what he was about. At school with George Bezos, 1948, thrown out, had no place to stay. George Bezos writes about this in a book that will come out very shortly, Baba. We're almost there, where he writes about his friendship with Dr. Mandela. It's on my desk, and I know we will, the book will come out very, very shortly. That's what, that's what he, and then Dr. Mandela represents honesty. Silibere. Honesty is vital in public life. It is everything. I was a judge. I knew that honesty must be the foundation of what I do, what I wake up to. Integrity. Honesty. Those things are so vital in his life. And your university must teach these young people the place of that. And not convenience, not, not expedience. Quick buck, sound the corner. How do I like to get out of difficult moments? So those values, I hope this university will be one of those that will always say honesty matters. Integrity matters. <laughs> Dr. Mandela lastly had a big, had a big love for his people. We've all given stories in a variety of ways. Let's love our people. <coughs> and if we love them, we must train them properly. We must give them access to health care. We must, we must give them all the good things that make their lives better. There's some that was part of him, so, so much part of him. And if we could just again get the people to be at the center of what we want to do. And lastly, for you, university, just defend the name now that you have it. I agree, no acronyms. But you must defend the name. We give it to you, but you must, there must be no other university like which, which bears your name. You'll almost have to have policing around the world to make sure that nobody invades this treasure, this new branding. Chancellor. And lastly, I walk out here a little sad. There's a book that has just come out called Mandela's Last Days. Talking about protecting Mandela's name. It's written by a doctor. His name is Ram Ramkalan. Ramlakan. He writes about the dying moments of Dr. Mandela. And he writes about the intimate exchanges between a doctor and a patient. As a matter of law, exchanges between a doctor and a patient are protected and privileged. There's something called doctor-patient confidentiality. And what I tell you as a patient, I've got a pimple on my left thigh. You, doctor, can't go and say, Santi, the Khan has a pimple on his left thigh. Also, when I make exchanges in the, in the course of our communication as doctor and patient, those exchanges are protected. Ordinarily. I know there's freedom of press on the one side, and such a detailed description of the exchanges between Dr. Nelson Mandela at his most vulnerable time to be converted into a book. It came up onto the shelves, I think, yesterday or day before. If it's not unlawful, it's in bad taste. Icons don't come, Deputy President, they don't fall off trees. It takes 
six, seven, eight, sometimes nine decades to build an icon. And we must be careful not to break down icons that lightly for selling a couple of books. And I'm sharing this with you with quite great distress. And I shared this distress only yesterday with Mrs. Krasha Michelle and with Magazine Mandela, all of them quite distressful about the kind of disclosures that a doctor does, having acquired them in a capacity as a medical practitioner attending to a patient, elderly and vulnerable. It's just not done, it's in bad taste. So, you university, you're going to find moments on occasions where you'll have to defend your turf. And you're going to be a long-standing bastion carrying this name. And that responsibility, VC, and those who follow you, besides all the wonderful values and all the good things that everybody has talked about, please make sure that we continue to value this. We have enough ropes around. If we have an icon of this nature, we owe a duty to ourselves, to everybody, to cherish his name, to defend it. And I know all of you will be true Madibas. Thank you.